and welcome to Izumi's Cozy Cast, the coziest MCRP podcast on the internet. Uh, hello, welcome. Um, today's topic let's talk about writing a Minecraft roleplay. So, before we get into the brunt of the topic, I really wanted to first just talk in general about storytelling as a whole. It doesn't necessarily need to be applying to Minecraft role plays or any sort of online web series. Storytelling is something that you really need to be passionate about to be in that sphere, if that makes sense. If you're creating a series of any sort, you need to be passionate about it. Um, I do understand that there are many things that go into creating a series, not just writing, directing, uh, casting, acting, so many things go into creating a good show. Um, but I definitely feel like being passionate about creating a story helps with any lack of motivation that might be felt, for sure. Does that mean that if you're not the best writer, you can't make a great series? No. I think you can make an amazing series, even if you aren't the most confident in your writing. But I do think that you should practice, and you need to have an underlying joy in the creation of it in general. Even if you don't have a passion for writing specifically, you need somewhat of a passion for at least storytelling. Um, now we can actually talk about, like, writing a Minecraft role play. So, the first thing I kind of wanted to tackle was how I personally go about writing Minecraft role plays. Um, I've done it a lot of different ways. I've been doing this for eight years now, basically. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I have a good bit of knowledge under my belt of just like how I've done it and how, what didn't work, what did work. So, um, obviously everyone has to find what works for them. What works for me might not ever work for someone else, but, um, I'm going to talk about how I do it. And then after that, we're going to be getting into some pet peeves I have of writing role plays. Um, does that mean that you can't do those said pet peeves? No, not at all. It's your life. Do what you want. Um, but I'll be giving my reasonings as well with them. And you can come below what you agree with, what you disagree with. Again, be civil and we can have a great conversation. Um, now... <laughs> On to what I do. So the first step to creating any Minecraft roleplay, writing any Minecraft roleplay specifically, is outlining. So outlining and creating characters. So it can go, it can go where you start with your basic idea and then you create a list of your characters, or it can go the other way around. I tend to start by creating my character list just because it gives me a good vibe for the show, but I already have a general mindset of what the show is at that point. So like I have a general, like this is the premise of the show. So like that technically is the very first thing. So like a very vague summary, very like it encompasses, I don't know how to say that word. Wow. Encompasses, encompasses, is that the word? It <laughs> includes <laughs> uh the entire series but in like a very like not even describing episode to episode literally just like this happens and this happens and this happens at the end makes sense okay that's like the very first step that i always do and then i'll go on to the characters as i said um i like to write down all my mains um side characters can come and go as i write and stuff um, and I'll add them as I'm writing the outlines and the official scripts later on. Um, but one thing I try to make sure is not adding too many characters. And that kind of comes into my, one of my pet peeves later on. You can have a very, very, very big main cast and have an amazing show. I don't think that that doesn't make your show amazing by any means. Um, but I'll explain later on why having too big of a cast can cause a little bit of issues with the writing process. Anyways. So I'll create my main cast. Um, normally there's like a main main cast and then a semi main cast with how I do stuff. So like 
Um, I'm right now writing Internet Crush, and these names mean nothing to you, so I can talk about it. Uh, it's my upcoming role play. Hopefully there will be a trailer out sometime relatively, probably probably next month from when this podcast comes out. So probably in February there will be an official trailer for the show. Hopefully. I'm working really hard to get it out before a Charmed Season 1, Charmed uh, Academic Season 1 finale premieres, um, because that'll premiere in February as well. So I'm hoping that it can be like, okay, here's the finale of season one of Turned Academics, here's the trailer, and now here's the next show, if that makes sense. So um, there won't be too long of a wait since I made you guys wait a long time for Turned Academics, but regardless, um, I create my characters, I have like a main main cast, and then I set my main cast. So my main main cast in Internet Crush is Izumi, Kenji, Mako, and Denki. That's like my main main cast. And then my semi main cast is uh, Hiroshi, Zenshin, uh, and Rin probably, which is Izumi's mom. Um, I'd probably say that in companies. In comp- I tried to do it again. I tried to say the word again. Why am I not? I'm looking this word up. I am looking this word up and you're going to hear me type on my keyboard. A comp been encompasses encompasses is that what i'm trying to say oh my god this is gonna drive me crazy if i don't find this word not accomplice not a company uh is this word let me put on my headphones I don't have my headphones on right now because I have glasses on and I have over-the-ear headphones and sometimes it hurts my head. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, Oh God, I can't even find out what word this says. Who am I to talk about writing when I can't think of a goddamn word? (laughs) I... I want to say it so bad. Oh God. God. Okay. That's going to bother me. It's okay. I'll comment down below what the word was that I was thinking of, or you can, and you can mock me for not knowing. <laughs> um, I think that lists off all of the semi main characters. And then there's like a supporting cast. So like characters that only show up every couple episodes that are still relevant characters to the storyline, but they're not necessity for every episode, if that makes sense. Um, and that is uh, Lee and Brianna, which, if you watched the last episode of the podcast, uh, Brie and Leah might be familiar names to you. And I was talking about two really good friends I had when I first started role plays. And these are little homage characters to them. Um, I don't really talk to them anymore. I've talked to Brie recently ish, um, but I haven't talked to Leah in years and years and years. I hope they're doing okay. Um, but uh, I named the characters Lee and Brianna as like a little, little nod to that because they're internet friends in the series. So I thought that was just a cute little nod. And those who know, know, not many people know, but that's like a fun little trivia, fun little Easter egg. Um, and then there's also like extras characters as well in the series. So um, that's fun, fine and dandy. So I'll list all those characters. I haven't listed all the supporting cast yet. No, I have. Yeah, I have. Okay, I've, I've listed, because I'm like in the outlining process right now. So like for Internet Crush. So I'm like right along with talking about this. That's why I'm talking about it in this podcast episode, because like it kind of just fits where I'm at mentally anyways outside of this. So that's why it's today's topic. Also, if you guys have topic ideas, comment them down below, whether they're Minecraft roleplay play related or not. Uh, I just like talking. (laughs) I got made fun of my entire childhood for being too talkative and look, look at me now. It's my job. (laughs) That and graphic design, I guess, and writing. But hey, this is part of my job. Also ASMR. I do ASMR. So like it is, yeah, that's definitely part of my job. Cause actually that is, you know, like, yeah. (laughs) Anywho, um, I, um, list out all the characters. I write basic descriptions. So I write, like, their name, their last name, of course, so their full name, um, 
age, uh, if it's a high school role play, I write their grade. But if it's not a high school role play, I write like either their op- occupation or um, something relevant to that world. If like it was like a Hunger Games style deal, and like I would write like where they're from. I forget what it's called. I've only watched Hunger Games. I've watched every movie, but only once, and I was it was a long time ago, so I don't remember the deals. But like you know how there's like the areas, the different spaces. And, like, there's the poor people area and there's, like, the rich people. You know what I'm talking about? Quadrants? No, it's not quadrants. Sections? I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about, though, if you know if you know what I'm referencing. Um, like, that, I would, like, put that under that category. Just something that is, like, good to note to yourself. And then I'll put their personality traits. So, like, um, outgoing, kind, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever traits the character may have. Or, like, any tidbits about them. Like, um... A lot of the characters in Internet Crush love D&D because I love D&D as the creator, so I wanted to add that in. And so I'll put that they love D&D um, for some characters. Other characters, I'll be like, their favorite video games are rage games or something, something like that. But um, that's the, I guess, technically second thing I do is write out all the characters. Um, and I'll add a reference photo as well for them. I'll just get something off of, you know, Pinterest just to fill in what the basic look of that character is. Um, next thing I'll move on to is I was about to do like the general Minecraft roleplay stuff and I was about to be like skin making, building. No, no, this is just writing. Next thing I'll do is I'll start outlining. So I'll go episode by episode and I'll write down everything that happens in like super basic. Izumi does this. They say this. Then they go here. Then this happens, like very basic, just so that I have something to go off of and I'm not opening up like episode three, the blank page, and I don't know where to start, if that makes sense. So I'm right now on episode, I actually have it open. Let me just scrolly scrolly. Um, I'm on episode 12 currently of 20 that are going to be in season one of Internet Crush. Um... And I started like only two days ago, guys. Like I'm making really good time with this. Um, Okay, then after I've outlined all of season one, yes, I outlined all of season one, sometimes even further, um, I will go ahead and I will start writing the scripts. So um, don't share your scripts with anyone until you are, you know, 100% they are ready to be voice acted. If you're not confident in the script, don't send it out to anyone yet because This comes into my pet peeves later. Um, Sending out a script and asking someone to redo it because you messed up or you didn't like your writing, voice actors are going to leave. And I don't blame them because a lot of the time this is for free. This is not a paying job. Um, And if they are in voice acting to do voice acting professionally one day or to get side income they're not going to want to redo the same script multiple times. So try to have that all laid out as soon as you can. And I speak from experience. So don't feel bad if you've done this in the past. Just try to not do it in the future. Um, Anyways, um, I'll write all of season one scripts typically before I even share them with the cast or I'll share them with the cast as I'm writing them, but I won't expect them to voice act them yet, if that makes sense. I won't ask for voice acted scripts until I have written all of them and proofread all of them and like done any editing work that I need to do. Um, Sometimes I'll break it up into two parts if it's a long season. I'll do season one, part one, um, and then I'll have that all voice acted and I'll do season two, part two. And how I send them out is um, I also have, I obviously have a Discord server how most Minecraft role players have, um, and I'll send out typically one to three scripts at a time, um, their deadlines. Um, I'll give them at least a week to do all this stuff. If it's a longer script, I'll give them more. Um, but if it's just like average, like a 10 minute episode, three 10 minute episodes, and none of the characters are like in every single scene, it's like pretty balanced. I'll give them about a week. Um, and then, They'll send in their lines for either one to three episodes, um, and then I'll send in the next three episodes or however many I send. And I'll just keep doing that back to back until I have all the episodes done, um, and I'll start working on the th- three past episodes that are already voice acted right after I get their lines in. Um, so yeah, <laughs> 
that's like the basic premise. Um, as for coming up with stories for writing, um, that's a big question I get is like, how do you get your inspiration for role plays? How do you come up with a good storyline? How do you come up with an original storyline? And I think the most important thing is to just listen to listen to your heart and what story you want to watch and tell, obviously. Um, don't get too in your head about what will do good versus what won't do good. Um, that can be an afterthought. If it's a good story that you like and you think others will like it too, that's what matters. As for gaining inspiration, I struggle with this question because I constantly come up with ideas for series and I have to stop myself from doing every series idea that pops into my head. Um, Because anytime I'm like, oh, that'd be a good concept for a series, I write it down. So I have like this big ass Google Doc of series ideas. Sorry, I just had to cut because I like had like a little coughing fit. I don't know what that was about. I'm gonna drink some water real quick. See if that's why I've, oh, I know why. My voice, ooh, one second. Okay. Sorry if my voice is a little hoarse, uh, nay. Oh. <laughs> um, I recorded six ASMR audios this morning and now I'm filming a podcast episode. Wow, talking really is my job. I shouldn't cut myself short on that aspect. Damn. Also, oh my god, my cats are being so freaking cute right now. I'm going to take a photo of them and put it on the screen for you guys because they are being so freaking cute. One second. Ignore the towels and like the little bit of clothes behind them in the photo. That's literally just because I changed it on my pajamas an hour ago to go to the store and they're just still there. And the towels are just because they were on my chair and I just moved them off quickly onto my bed. But look at the beans! Oh my god, they're so cute. Anyways, <laughs> enough getting distracted by Puffin and Raven, or Rory and Raven. because So, we named Puffin Rory to begin with. Rory Puffin. It was like, her middle name was Puffin. Um, she also has a second name, second middle name, Josefina, because she looks like a little Joey, and so we wanted like Joey to be one of her nicknames. We struggled with naming Rory, um, and it's R O R I, by the way, like Rory Gilmore. Um, it's I'm pretty sure it's it's a Gaelic name, I believe. Um, I think. Um, Raven was really easy because we always thought of having a black cat and naming it Raven, like the bird Raven. Um, but with Rory, we didn't know what to name Rory because we hadn't thought about getting like a tuxedo cat before. Um, but my mom had the suggestion of Rory because it's Gaelic and she knew we liked like Nordic and Gaelic names. And so we wanted that. And I love Gilmore Girls. So like it fit too. And, like, that's, our, that's one of the shows me and my mom bonded over a lot. So it was very fitting for her to suggest that name. Um, but then Tamakichi started calling her Puffin as, like, a nickname. So we made it her middle name. And we really only call her Puffin now. <laughs> her name is still Rory. Like, they're Rory and Raven. Like, that's such a cute little, like, R&R, &R, you know? But we call her Puffin. So, like, you guys can call her Puffin or Rory. It's up to you guys. And then Raven is Raven. Uh, her middle name's Biscuits, by the way. <laughs> They're so cute. Anyways, back on topic, Jamie. Jeez. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, where was I? I was on to... Oh, God, where was I on to? I had talked about outlining. I talked about script writing, getting all your scripts written, everything like that. Um... Uh, oh, writing the story from your heart. Yes. Um, don't be stressed out about if you are copying someone else. Uh, don't copy someone else directly. Don't ever do that. There's a, there's a line between copying and inspiration. And like, like there are some people that can do a really good role play that is in the same realm as another role player and I think that's completely fine I think that's completely fair game inspiration is so cool when I see people make 
role plays that are like mine, but they added their own originality into it, I am honored. I think that is the coolest form of flattery. I think that's awesome because it makes me feel like I created something worth copying, if that makes sense. Um, and the fact that they added their own originality makes me enjoy it. They're not just stealing my ideas, you know? Um, I think as long as you take it and you make it original, fucking go for it, you know? Um, like, Minecraft Myths is very much inspired by Athmo's MCD uh, because it's something that's very nostalgic for me and many of you guys. And I always wanted to do a series like that, but I was scared of being called a copycat. Um, and I think because I did it where, like, the only real relation is it's first person and it's medieval fantasy and I'm the lord of the village. I feel like that's different enough. And I make, like, nods to Aphmau occasionally where I'm, like, I literally break the fourth wall and I'm just, like, <laughs> it sounds familiar, you know, like that kind of stuff. And that's chill. I think that's completely chill. It's completely fair game. Now, if I started to role play <laughs> where I was in Phoenix, Phoenix Bloom or some shit like that, I don't fucking know. Um, and I was the daughter of a goddess named um, Eileen, you know, like that. <laughs> Sorry, I just peeked my mic probably. That's when it's like, oh, that you're just copying you're not making it your own and i think that's something a lot of people are scared of they're worried they're going to be seen as a copycat i literally when i first started youtube had to block the phrases copycat afmau and copying and rip off i had to block those from my comments at age like 11 because the first ever deal I did was Legend of Trinity, which was a medieval role play. And I will say, I definitely, like, stole some ideas from Aphmau. I was 11 fucking years old. <laughs> like, I just liked Aphmau. I wasn't trying to make a series that would make me popular or was super original or that would be, like, my big series that I was known for. I wanted to be a part of Minecraft Diaries, and so I made something like it. Um, and I wasn't the daughter of a goddess. I just wasn't. Um, I'm pretty sure Trinity was like a Valkyrie type character. Like she was a warrior type character. Um, and I was like somehow connected to her. I don't remember. Uh, wait, is Aphna the daughter or is she a reincarnation? I don't remember. It's been a very long time since I actually looked into like the lore of the series. But regardless, and like I had a kid. Like, I found a kid, like, Levin style um, in Legend of Trinity. <laughs> so, like, I definitely wasn't being authentically original, for sure. Um, but I don't think you should hate on an 11-year-old for stealing the fact that the main character has a kid, is the lord of a village, and has a flirtatious guy character, Lauren style. Like, those were the main things that, like, were similar to Aphmau's MCD that were in Legend of Trinity. Um, now, if I created that nowadays, I would totally expect people to hold me accountable for that because that was too similar, in my opinion, for, like, something a adult should create or someone that is, like, over 15 years old to create, you know? But, like, Minecraft Myths is basically just healing that for me it's like taking something that is inspired by mcd but it's original and it has that nostalgia factor for people who watched minecraft diaries but it's my thing you know it's 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 different enough that it feels like its own entity if that makes sense um obviously comment down your opinions on this again as long as everyone is civil, I am more than willing to have conversations in the comments about everything. I think that this is a, it should always be a lighthearted topic when talking about something as simple as Minecraft roleplays. It's like, it's not, it's not something you should get that angry about, you know? It's just a form of storytelling at the end of the day. Okay, I think we can get on to pet peeves now. I think. I don't think there's anything else. Um, 
Oh, really quick, I should talk about this because it was one of the questions I listed earlier, but I didn't fully answer it. Um, how to get like inspired to do a show. As I said earlier, I struggle with this question because I always get inspired to do different shows. But as someone who has friends who struggle with this kind of stuff or back in the day when I wasn't as good of coming up with ideas and I was still figuring out how to do it and getting my footing and stuff like that um because I wasn't always popping out stories out of my wazoo <laughs> I did struggle for a while um I think my biggest recommendations is what I used to do back in the day um or this piece of advice I'm gonna give you afterwards so what I used to do back in the day is I would do a brain hurricane which is basically like a brainstorm but even fucking more crazy um, I would write down any word, any idea, anything, any name, any place, any origin of whatever, any, any, any thing, anything that came to my mind, write it down in a Google Doc. I'd make it all pretty. <laughs> I'd use a cute little font, make it all prettified. I'd delete the word they don't like. I'd figure out ways that I can form sentences with the words. And then I would figure out a way to turn that into a sentence, figure out a way to turn that into a paragraph, figure a way to turn that into a summary. There you go. You got an episode slash series idea, if that makes sense. So like, that's what I used to do when I really struggled. Nowadays, what I would recommend to someone who doesn't struggle, um... I think you need to sit in silence. I know. I know. I am. A, I, I'm an iPad kid. I don't like silence. I like being on. I like having my headphones on, my wireless headphones on, and I like just fucking listening to things. I am not a silence person. But occasionally, when your mind is racing, racing, racing with all these noises, it's hard to think. It's hard to think of a series idea. So pause whatever you're watching. Even if it's this, pause it and just try this out real quick. Pause it and I want you to pause it obviously after I'm done describing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I want you to pause this after this. Um, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine your favorite... Your favorite form of storytelling. So whether that's like, not form, your favorite genre of storytelling. Is that romantic comedies? Is that dramas? Is that action adventures? Is that fantasy? Is that sci-fi? What is it? And I want you to take that. Whatever your favorite of that is. And I want you to imagine a character. A character you would relate to. A character that isn't perfect. But you like. There you go. You got your setting and you got your main character. <laughs> I feel like that is a good way of doing it. Anyways, pause the video now and go ahead and do that real quick. Welcome back. <laughs> Uh, for those who actually did that, awesome. Tell me, comment down below what your setting is and what your main character looks like. Obviously, you don't have to have a name for them, um, but tell me what they are, their traits are. Tell me uh, what they look like um, if you did it. If you didn't do it, that's fine too. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if that works for anyone out there. Um, I know some people um, can't imagine images in their head. Uh, they can only imagine feelings. Uh, for that, Imagine the feeling of being wherever you are, you know, like imagine the idea of it um, and then imagine the idea of the person, you know, um, I know you might not get as clear of a view, but I feel like you get the gist. Um, yeah, that's what I would recommend nowadays because I feel like that's kind of what I do, but I do it without thinking about it. And yeah, <laughs> okay, now on to pet peeves. So... I want you guys to comment yours down below. Again, be respectful of others. And if someone comments a pet peeve that you don't agree with, you can comment back, but be very kind. 
this is a very cozy, safe space for everyone to speak their opinions, but you cannot shit on anyone else's opinion by speaking your opinion. Don't say, I think it's garbage unless it's like this. That's not, that's not stating your opinion. That's shitting on someone else's interests. You just say, I prefer it when it's like this. Not everything else is garbage, but this, you know? Um... There's a tasteful way, loves. There's a tasteful way. Also, the first episode hasn't come out yet, so I haven't seen your critiques on how I am podcasting yet. Um, It comes out in two days. I'm nervous. Um, This is probably going to come out a week after that. I'm probably going to post these every Sunday at like 3 p.m. EST, I think is what I'm going to do. That or 4 p.m. EST. I'm not sure. Um, But yeah. Pet peeve time. I had to pause the recording and go back to earlier because I forgot what the pet peeves were. I'm going to write them down real quick so I don't forget them again. Let's write them down. Oh, God. It's fine. I'll remember. This pen doesn't work. (laughs) Okay. First, having a really big cast. Now, as I said earlier, you can have a really big cast and have a really good story, but it's really hard. Um, because it can feel clustered. And this is speaking from experience. I had a really big cast in the original Minecraft High School. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Not Minecraft High with Angel and Dean. Minecraft High School with Izumi, Chris, Dean. Not Angel and Dean. Yeah, Angel and Dean. Izumi, Chris, Adam, um, Zoroki, uh, Danielle, Belle, Lucas, God, there were so many of them. I for, I honestly don't remember the rest of the cast. There were a lot of cast members in that. And it was fine. I think I did very well for how little experience I had with that big of cast members. And I think it's definitely doable. But it becomes a pet peeve when there's so many that there's a character that has no purpose. If a character has no... Like has no relativity to the plot, nothing that helps out the main character, nothing that helps out anyone in the main main cast they have no meaning to the story and so it's going to be hard for viewers to like their character if that makes sense um they have to have some sort of connectivity to why they're there what do they bring to the table what do they bring to the aspect of the group or the extended group stuff like that now on to my next pit peeve that i talked about earlier writing scripts and then changing them and making your voice actors redo the scripts. Now, if you've already done it, chill. Don't worry about it. I get it. It happens. I've done it in the past, so I get it. It's hard when you don't like what you wrote, so you have to rewrite it and you already asked for the voice actors to voice it. But here's a simple little little response to that. Um, write all of your first season before you even send out a script. That is like a big thing I stand by and I would be rolling my eyes right now if it was me at age 13 because I I was like, I'd be like, I don't got time for that. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't got time for that. I want to write script to script and I want to send them out to my VAs right when they're done because I'm excited and if there's mistakes, I'll redo them. But the thing is, as I said earlier, Voice actors are typically working for free on small Minecraft role plays. Now, if you're paying your VAs, that's fine. I have them redo it if they need to, but it needs to be more than like $20. You know, it needs to be an actual, like they're being paid per word in the script. You know, like if they're working for free, especially unless they mess up something, you shouldn't have to ask them to redo lines. Um, or if they say something wrong, you know, if they say something, AKA messed up something, I guess it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, I think that's something to really note. I think it's very important. I think it's very, I think it's just kind of people to make sure that they didn't mess up before they make someone feel like they messed up and have to redo something. Um, but I've done it before and so I get it. But it is something that is definitely a big pet peeve of mine that I think people need to learn is not super cool to do. Um, As someone who has a boyfriend who is 
pursuing professional voice acting. That is not cool to do to, to voice actors. I know a lot more about voice actors now, I think is the main difference from me at age 13 versus me at age 19. I have a lot of friends who are going into voice acting to hopefully become a professional voice actor, including my boyfriend. And so it really, it's disrespectful towards the voice actors to have them redo something that are, they already did fine. Um, just because you messed up and you didn't fix it before you sent it to them. Um, but yes. <laughs> um, also a big pet peeve of mine. Oh my God, this is such a big pet peeve, but this is such like a, I feel like you guys will understand where I'm coming from completely with this one. When people don't believe in themselves and so they don't post role plays. <laughs> That is something that is so frustrating for me because if you never post, you never win and you never, you already have failed because you didn't post. You need to get yourself out there. If it's, if it's fear of not doing well, well, you're already not doing well because you never even posted it. It can't do worse than it's doing right now. It can only do better. So what if it doesn't get as many views as you want it to? It has none, it has no views right now. And I know it can be scary because it's the outside viewing you. It's the outside world viewing you. But you just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. Um, you gotta get out there and you need to post because if you don't post, you won't know what you're doing wrong. It's not going to be perfect, but nothing is. And eventually it'll be so much better than that first episode. And you'll be able to look back and be like, wow, I've done so much since then. And I've gotten so much better at writing stories, directing, figuring out what mods I need, everything. And that is really cool. And like specifically since we're talking about writing a role play, if you're insecure about how you write and you're insecure about it not being good enough of a story to tell, blah, 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 blah. You can either get your friends to look at it with you, tell them you want really honest feedback and be open to hearing it. Do not sit there and be like, oh, I did that because of this. I've done that before and I get it. You're defending what you've worked really hard on. But if you are nervous about it going out, there's a reason. So be open to people's critiques. Now, there's a difference between someone critiquing your thing because they care about you and critiquing your thing because they want to stab sabotage you because they think that it's really good and they don't want you to do well. Make sure you're talking to someone you really, really trust. You really, really trust. You really value their opinion and you know they would never treat you wrong. You know, obviously, there's still exceptions to that because people can be very fake, um, but try to find yourself some real friends that really care about you and you're not worried about that. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, I was just thinking of like, I've met a lot of fake people through like online. Uh, cause there's just a lot of people, fake people in general, just in the world. Um, but I just, I think it's just so important to have people that you really trust near you. Um, especially when you're creating content because it's such a vulnerable thing, um, because it's taking something creative and putting it out into the public. And if you don't have a good support team around you, that can be scary. That can be really, really scary. Um, as well as like, you need to support yourself. And that kind of goes into my next pet peeve of like branching off from my pet peeve of people doing all this work for a role by never posting it. Now we get into people who don't believe that they can make a role play, even though they really want to. Now, I'm a firm believer that you can do anything as long as you are passionate about it and are willing to put in the time. Obviously, schedules from school or work can obviously interfere with it. But if you're passionate enough about something, there's a reason why people like freaking, I don't know, Markiplier, when he was, he was going to college when he first started role-playing. Role <laughs> no, um, when he first started being on YouTube, um, first on content creation. And 
he still made time for it as a college student. Did he end up dropping out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's because he found out, oh, I'm not passionate about what I'm going to school for, and I need to do this instead, you know? Um, but many content creators have done it. And, like, I had a full-time job. I was waitressing every single day during the holidays um, at age 15. It was right before I actually took a break from YouTube and then came back. Um, but I was still working really hard to to do it. And I know that it can be really, really hard to make time for something um, when you need to prioritize mental health and stuff like that. And that's the reason I needed to take a break from everything, work, fun, <laughs> everything, um, was because of my mental health. Now, obviously, getting your mental health Getting help for your mental health is more important than anything. But for me, nowadays, if I didn't do this, if I didn't do content creation in any capacity, my mental health would be a lot worse. I am a creative through and through. I love creating things. And if I'm not creating something, I feel, I feel like I'm holding myself back. Because I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm good at creating things. Um, I don't, by any means, think I am the best at anything. But I know I have a talent in creating things, and I know that I love it, and I know that I have a passion for it and a drive for it. And so nowadays, I need it. <laughs> and so, like, it all depends on what type of mental health you have and what you need because everyone's different. Um, but no matter how shitty your equipment, no matter how little you know, no matter how much quote-unquote better others are than you, does not mean you can't start somewhere. There's always room to start moving forward towards your passion becoming a reality. I started at age 11, going to school full time. I was obviously, I was homeschooled, but that honestly meant a little bit more pressure because that year before I'd even started YouTube, I was falling behind in, in math. So I basically had to do double the year of math so I wouldn't be behind a grade. Um, and my parents were my teachers, which means that your principal's constantly around. Um, <laughs> sure, I didn't have to wake up and go to a... Actually, I did. I, I went to school, school, three times a week during that point in my life. But regardless, I was 11 years old, doing this on a really shitty laptop, headset mic that I borrowed from my dad, doing it before school, after school. Late at night, whenever I had the chance, obviously, obviously, prioritize, prioritize your health first. Don't skip meals. Go to bed at a decent hour, especially if you have to wake up for school in the morning. But there's still always room to do what you love. The weekends, great opportunity. Your day's off, great opportunity. There's always room to do what you love. And if you love it enough, you will do it. It's not about waiting till you have everything perfect. It's about planning for when you have everything perfect. Okay, so you can't record yet because you really hate your microphone and you want to upgrade. Start saving up for that new microphone. And in the meantime, write, write the season one scripts. And start casting. Oh, but... The world, it, it runs really slow on your laptop. Okay, take out as many mods as you can and only use custom NPCs and like CMD cam or aperture and you're the only body actor. There's always ways to make it happen. It may not be perfect. It may not be what you want for right now. But if you want to make role plays, there's always a way. Because it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people get hung up on is they, they make it stressful for themselves where this is supposed to be creative. This is supposed to be fun. 
this is supposed to be hang if it's if it's a first person with your friends type of role play that's just supposed to be hanging out with your friends goofing off improving if it's a cinematic role play if you have body actors do the work obviously but like make jokes along the way if it's you by yourself freaking put on a podcast <laughs> i'm a little impartial to izumi's cozy cast Put on a YouTube video, put on whatever it may be, put on Critical Role, whatever, whatever it may be, and record and have a good time and be like, oh, that cinematic looked so freaking good. And like send a, send a video to your friends of that cinematic being like, didn't I pop off today? <laughs> I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Uh, I was going to quote TikTok, but then that'll age this video. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, that's probably my biggest pet peeve is people making excuses for not starting. Um, as if you have the game, if you have Java edition of Minecraft, there's nothing holding you. Uh, and, and of course you have some sort of microphone. I also, OBS is free, by the way, the recording software that most YouTubers use. It is free. When I first started, I started with Bandicam because I couldn't figure out OBS. Bandicam is also free, but it has a watermark on top. Sorry, I keep hiccuping. Um, as for audio recording, if you want to record your audio separately, I don't suggest starting like that if you're doing a first-person role play because um, yeah, I think practice is a little bit... You need to practice a little bit before getting into that. But um, for like audio lines, use Audacity. It's completely free. A U D A. C-I-T-Y. I believe I spelled that right. Um, it's completely free and you can use it to record your lines. If you're voice acting for your friends and they're voice acting for you, you can all use Audacity and you can save everything as an mp3 file. It's great. And if you want to get rid of background noise as a noise reduction deal, just literally look up how to noise reduce on Audacity and you can figure it out. There's Google is great. Google and YouTube, they teach you a lot of things. And that's like, that's how I learned. I taught everything to myself besides recently. My boyfriend taught me how to body act multiple characters in Blockbuster, which that's going to be a game changer. Internet Crush is going to be so much better than anything else I've done before because I'll be able to body act multiple characters because I don't use body actors personally. So like, I'm stepping on my game a little bit. But everything else besides that, I've taught myself over the years, either th through YouTube tutorials or Googling it. Or just playing around with the mod and figuring it out. So, if you got the passion, you can do it. And I believe in you. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. This is the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Again, anything you want to talk about that was on this podcast, I just hit my mic. Anything you want to talk about that I talked about in the podcast, please comment down below. I love having conversations with you guys down in the comments. So, please, don't be scared. Nothing you're going to say is stupid so just talk <laughs> you got this i believe in you and no matter if you do all of my pet peeves or you do none of my pet peeves i love you the same don't think that if you do something that is one of my pet peeves that i dislike you because at the end of the day everyone's their own person and i'm not going to judge someone for doing something differently differently than me anyways bye loves see you next time